As promised, I'm going to be doing another measuring proportions demo, but this time I'm going to rely a little bit less on the measuring and more on just trusting my eyeballs and then check those proportions with a little bit of measuring just to make sure as you get better and better and you can start trusting your eyeballs, you want to start measuring a little bit less for two reasons. You know, one is it just takes more time to measure everything and be so precise. And two is because it's going to train your eyes more. It's going to be a lot more beneficial for you long term to trust your eyeballs. The third reason is that eventually you don't want to always just be confined to your reference. You want to be able to change things a little bit here and there. And to be able to do that, you, know, you kind of have to go beyond measuring. You have to be able to look at the reference, keep those shapes and those proportions in your head, and then be able to change them how you want and still be as accurate as what you're going for instead of measuring. Things like plumb lines and angles, as soon as you shift something on purpose, those things don't align anymore. You can't draw a plumb line if you tilted the head a little bit intentionally. But if your eye is trained really well, you can still kind of maintain the correct proportions while shifting things around. And so it's good to be able to develop both of those things. And the way to do that is by just practicing eyeballing more. The reason that I wanted to start with just really strict measuring those because measuring is another really good skill to have. You want to be able to measure accurately and just be really comfortable doing that. And also as a beginner, when you really just can't rely on your eyeballs almost at all, uh, it's good to start with some of those training wheels like I talked about. But if you just jump in and try to get everything accurate from by eyeballing as a beginner, it might just be too hard and it, it's really frustrating. It's up to you where that balance is comfortable for you at your level. Uh, but I just wanted to give you guys just both of these approaches and you can choose what's best for you right now. I've always wanted to draw Silly Murphy. Just thought he had a really great face. His eyes are very kind of striking. Since, you know, I just watched Oppenheimer, great time. Why not? Let's do it. I was going between these two, but ultimately chose this one. I feel like I really like how you could really see that top, the heavy top lid. Going with this one. So I'm gonna go a little bit more precise. I'm gonna go with a mechanical pencil. I have a 2B in here right now. Also, I haven't really been reminding you guys to do warm ups, so I'm gonna do a warm up to start. All right, wonderful. Let's begin. So, for this particular portrait, I think an envelope would actually work really well. His head fits really well into like, if we just wrap this, it's just like a nice simple shape as it is. That's a good place to start. I want to make sure I don't put it right in the middle. I'm going to bring it to the right a little bit to give some space over here. Kind of just looking at this angle. Now, one thing though I am noticing is that I'm tilting his head way too far to the right. Since I would have to erase the whole thing, let me just, let me just start over. This is good for you guys to see. It's a process. You check yourself, you make a mistake, and when you fix that mistake, it's actually a good thing for you. You're actually learning. I'm going to try to fix two things. The angle of the face is gonna be better more extreme this way. And I'm not going to move it too far to the right this time. This seems good. Like there's a little bit more space on the left than there is on the right. Just a little bit. Yeah, I'm just making adjustments as I go. I'll put a line down. And then as I put another line down, I might notice that, oh, this one was actually off. So let's move it. 
maybe even more. I can make some measurements. I'm noticing just with my eyes that this plumb line right here is kind of nice. Where from the chin over is pretty much where the neck touches the collar. So I'm taking a mental note of that and just like bringing it down to where I see it here. I'm still comparing and it's, it's almost impossible to compare without making a mental measurement. I'm just not being as dependent on like taking all these measurements, almost creating like a kind of a form of a grid and like plotting it out and then going in and putting things in. I'm going a lot more intuitive, imprecise with this and slowly bringing things in to be closer and closer. This angle I put in, it's the it's the envelope of that face. What I'm seeing is a lot of angles going in and out. I just have one big angle going all the way across and I might need to bring the brow in a little bit from that average. And I'm also just kind of taking a guess at where that brow corner even is. I might find out later that I have to drop or raise it up a little bit and that's okay. As long as I keep everything pretty simple right now, then it won't be too difficult for me to make those adjustments. Now what I'm doing is looking at this shape of the hair. It's a pretty simple shape. You kind of have like this rectangular form here and kind of a little teardrop or something over here. I'm just making sure that the size relationship of these two pieces are, are correct, the width to height. I'm making sure that they feel correct to me. I'm like I can make subtle modifications to the angle. And then there's another shape coming out right here. So like this shape of the hair, the, the shaved part. And this, I can also make a mental note. If I just bring it horizontally, it kind of runs across the tear ducts right there. But initially, as I was doing this, glancing over to my reference and being like, hey, where do I end this shape? And then I just kind of projected it forward and I was like, oh, like somewhere around here. And then I just did the same thing in my drawing. And also, I got to keep in mind that this is not precise. This right here could be like here or it could be here and it would still be roughly in line with this. I could still make minor adjustments to this as I go. I'm feeling like maybe this is a little bit too large compared to the, the length here. Maybe? I'm not sure yet. Just I'm kind of making that mental note right now. It's like maybe that's a little bit too large. And as I get a little more evidence, I might adjust. Note, this is at an angle. This seems almost equal, but I feel like this distance from the nose to the chin is a little bit longer than this. So I wanna throw that in the same way. So this is a little bit longer than that, but not crazy. 
And then when I'm drawing the nose, I'm kind of thinking of that positive negative shape thing where if you consider the nose to be the positive shape, the thing I'm drawing, then the negative shape of that could be like the background, which is like the rest of his face here. As I put in the nose, I'm also creating a shape of the cheek here, right? So it's like I'm drawing this shape, but I'm creating a shape here just by default. I have to think about both of those shapes that I'm creating. Pretty much straight up, but maybe a little bit to the right. One thing that I'm kind of noticing, I think I made the nose a little bit too wide. Very simple shape in here, defining the, the brow. It's like this going up, this going across, and then this going down. And then same thing on this side. Up at an angle, down at a slight angle, and then in again. Okay, before I keep going, <laughs> I think, I mean, I could have actually started taking a few measurements a little bit earlier, like maybe right before I started putting these details within the face, but I didn't feel like anything was terribly wrong, so I didn't, but I, I think before I keep going, I, I should just double check some things. From the brow to the edge of the, the head, if I go take that same measurement this way, Kind of takes me to the corner of the lip. So let's just double check that from the brow. Oh, well, actually, I don't even have the lip <laughs> in there. So that doesn't help me measure, but I guess the lip would be here based on that. But what else is in that area? Like this. Actually, that lines up right where I put that corner. So that's nice. But maybe let's check this width of the jaw. So from the beginning of the ear, and that just kind of takes me up here. That looks pretty much correct. This is really good news that my eyeballing was very close. So the jaw, the width from here to here compared to the height from here down to like right about there is correct. Maybe I could also double check this distance in here and yeah, it's just shy of being in in the middle but maybe mine's just a little bit shorter in here i could bring this in just a tad just a little bit this corner right here where it changes just feels a little bit off to me so where would it be About there, right about the corner of the cheek, actually. Maybe a little lower.
I think right here I need to drop this down a little bit. So I've come to the part where I'm confident in my larger shapes. I, I measured it, double checked a few of those big measurements and everything seemed to be very close. Just kind of interesting, like I feel like I'm closer with this one than I was with the previous one where I was measuring a lot. Trusting your eye could be a really good approach kind of makes sense. Once you develop your eye enough to where it's trustworthy, an approach where you're just trusting your eye and you're making adjustments quickly based on your intuition is much faster and you're just, you're making lots of quick adjustments because measuring takes a lot of time. You're measuring, you're double checking and like an hour in, you just have like a few big measurements in and you haven't really had too much time to make adjustments like you're just getting started putting those big shapes in it's a good approach for beginners that don't have their eye developed but there is really something to say about training your eye to the point where you can trust it to make lots of really really quick adjustments i've gone through and in the same amount of time that it took me in the last one to get just the big shape in i've made like five times more decisions about subtleties and I've double checked them with my intuition many times, triple checked them. And then I went in and just took a few measurements and was like, oh yeah, it was right. It's not always like that. Sometimes you'll have a day where it's just like your eyeballs just aren't working and things seem off. And that's, you know, that's totally normal. There's two parts to this, uh, to this jaw. There's a part where the bone is and then there's a part where it's kind of connecting to the neck. The one I drew is all the way right here. I was following the bone. And so there is another piece right here that you typically will see people draw. Very thin over here. What I'm doing right now is just, I'm going through and refining this outer shape a little bit. I did get a little bit too detailed maybe in this area. I'm putting in a lot of very small angles. But in here, I'm keeping it really simple still. Just cleaning it up is because everything in here is now going to be based off of these shapes. And so I really just want to make sure that these are as close as they can be. All of these shapes that I've refined, this is kind of the level I want to keep it at. I probably got a little bit too organic, even for my own taste. Like this just feels kind of poorly designed. I'd rather have simplified this to a few larger angles, but I went pretty dark, so I don't feel like erasing it. Now let's come in and start putting in these features. This, this is a pretty big shape. I'm not only thinking of the shape of the eye, I'm also thinking of this negative shape that it creates over here, this little triangle.
I don't actually see an oval in there. This highlight is so large and like lots of stuff going on here that it totally breaks up this oval that you'd usually see. And also his eyes are really light. You don't really see a clear border around his his iris. Even around here, I, there's no highlight, but I still don't see a clear border. It's part of why his eyes are kind of like really striking is like it's really focused around the pupil. One really important thing to get right here, other than the angle between the eyes, which you saw I was, I'm drawing this angle from here to here, from the top to the top, from the corner of the eye to the corner of the eye. Uh, the other thing is the width relationship. This eye is wider when you go from tear duct to corner than this one, because this one is wrapping around. The eyes don't face forward, they're wrapping around the the cylinder of the, the head. This is a little bit wider. Just making sure I'm not drawing like an almond shape. The big difference here is that the peak, the vertical peak is really far over to the left. Here I'm going almost straight up, right? And then there's like a little angle this way and then really long angle this way. So it's not just like a little goldfish almond shape. Don't see a clear border, but I'm gonna just put a light one in there very lightly. This is where this eraser comes in handy. They can get, they can kind of draw in some light shapes, very, very thin light shapes. I noticed that like I mentioned in the critique that I want to complete my shapes and can think of them as like full shapes. I don't want to just draw like dashes, have separate little dashes all over the place. Sometimes, especially in features like the lips, the nose, the ears, the I guess all the features, sometimes it does make sense to have a few little indications and then leave gaps because otherwise things just look too outlined and two dimensional. And when you leave a few areas that are incomplete and kind of bleed into the rest of it, it does connect it to the rest of the face a little bit better. It's a little bit contradicting. Um, I am still thinking of this entire shape, but I'm not just throwing in an outline around the whole thing because it's just going to feel cartoony. And so instead, I'm indicating the areas where I'm really seeing those darks. Because like at the bottom of his eye, I'm really just seeing that dark right here where the lashes are darkest. And then in between, it gets much softer and just kind of blends in. And so I'm actually seeing that shape kind of disappear and fuse together with the skin. And so that's how I'm indicating it. I'm not like making anything up. I'm actually losing the edge of that shape where I see it being lost. So I'm actually staying more true to the reference by doing that. Look at what I did here. You see how right here, this blends together a lot more than this. Like this is really contrasty, really sharp, obvious edge and border between these two. I put a really dark, and thick line in here separating these areas. Whereas in here, I made them lighter and like even kind of blurry. Like this, this whole area seems a little fuzzy to me, grouping these two together a little bit more. This is cl clearly separated and this is just kind of like merging in. Same thing in here. This right here is merging in more than like right here. And I'm um, doing the same thing in here in the nose. Like this part of the nose, 
I see a corner, but it's just so subtle and it merges in with the skin of the cheek. I want to make sure I don't just draw like a really thick, dark line across the nose here. I'm going to make it a little bit darker right here where I'm seeing that nostril shape coming out a little bit more. But I'm going to keep this kind of light. I probably won't even touch it. I'll leave it with my construction lines and maybe even I could just drag it, my eraser across a little bit and lighten it even more. You might be noticing how like in here and in here, I'm not completing my shape. And that goes against what I said in the critique. This right here is a shape too. I'm not just drawing this shape here. Every little thing in here is a shape on itself. It's just a much smaller shape. Probably too small to be considering at this stage. But just as you get more advanced, you do start thinking about the next step in the previous step. You start setting it up a little bit. Because if you go in and you start, if you outline everything really dark, it's going to be really difficult in the next step to undo that. It's really obvious in the lips. Like this is a really big mistake. So once I get there, I'll come back to this. Let's complete this eye. Soft line here, a little bit sharper right there, and then it fades off. If we're thinking of line weight, it's really obvious right here. So I'm going to put a little heavier line, really lighten up, and then right in here, pick it up again. Same thing in here that I was talking about where this, this whole edge of the shadow is really soft. Like, you know, this compared to this, you could just... You can always find some really, really sharp edge in your reference and then compare everything else to it. Like it could be this. It could also be like the edge of the cheek right here. Uh, could also be like something in here where it's just pure black and white next to each other. Just find something that's really obviously sharp and contrasty and then compare whatever you're drawing to that and see like how light and how soft do I want to make this line? This is pretty light and soft in relationship. Not much else I really need to do with the nose. I mean, I could come in here and clean up the line weight a little bit if I want to, like make this a little bit stronger. Maybe there's a little edge right there and right there. A little stronger in the edge right here. But other than that, it's, it's a pretty good indication of the nose already. Maybe it could help to just get this angle of the cast shadow in there. See that little line that comes across right there? Let's get into the lips. If I take this corner right here and go straight up, it's pretty much under the nostril. Assuming I have the nostril in the right spot. Maybe somewhere in there. Something like that. And then I still have this light line right here where I found the lip to be, but it was very imprecise. If I need to adjust that, that's fine. Really wanna, what I wanna do is I wanna look at this vertical space and see like where do these lips fit in that vertical space. The distance between the bottom of the nose to the lip is almost, it's pretty close to the size of the lips themselves, but just a little bit smaller. I'm seeing it like something like this. Maybe just a tiny bit lower. And then if I just increase that size just a tad. Now 
And then yeah, like I feel like the chin to the bottom lip is probably twice as long as this right here. And that seems about right. This was, I think, a little bit too low based on these slightly more precise measurements or more precise eyeballing judgments. So that, this feels too large. Maybe like that. This was a guess. This angle was a guess. And now what I should do to really double check myself is draw a plumb line up. right there. So if I drop it from here straight down, aha, perfect. So it's, it's nice when a measurement confirms your intuition. When those two align, it's probably right. The worst is when it looks wrong, but then you measure it and it's right, then it looks wrong. If it looks wrong, that means it looks bad, right? If you measured it, it looks wrong, and but it is right. That means something else maybe around it is wrong and it's making that thing look wrong, uh, which is frustrating because then it's like you got to figure out what that thing is. I was talking about how in the lips is another area where you don't want to just outline things. Sometimes what that'll happen is like in here, you might see an edge but it's really subtle, like right here, it's actually really subtle. The, the shadow on the lip is pretty close to so the shadow on the red part of the lip is pretty close to the shadow of here on the top part. I don't want to draw a really dark outline, I just want to indicate softly that there's a line there. And then in here, like there is no line, like that just goes right and spills in right into the cheek or the jaw. Same thing in here, like this shadow is so blurry in here. Like if I just put a, like a really crisp line around it, it's gonna feel like he's wearing lipstick or something. It's gonna feel like it's cartoon lips. These are not cartoon lips. It's volume that's like slowly wrapping around and the light is interacting with those tiny round volumes. It is not a sharp line everywhere, like as if you cut out lips and just put pasted it on. The bottom lip, I see very clearly an edge right there, like there's a lot of contrast between the shadow under the lip and the lip, but then on the outsides, it's like gets way more blurry. What I typically do is instead of drawing this top lip, instead what I'll do is, is I'll draw the shadow underneath the lip, because that's a much more obvious shape when I look at it when I squint, that shadow shape pops out. So you see how uh, there's no real true outlines here. Even in here, I'm kind of breaking up this line and letting the shapes kind of fuse together and combine into lips. If you try to indicate everything and make everything important, then nothing becomes important. It's usually better to kind of try to leave things to the viewer's eye to interpret and complete 
And then other things that you feel like are really important to illustrate the statement, the thing that's happening. You just find those really important areas and you make those really obvious and clear and everything else just kind of subtle. That's a difficult thing to balance out. It's also very personal to you. Let's see here. It's almost done here. Features are pretty much in. I could start coming in here and getting the shadows of the nose. I don't feel like I need to get into that detail in the land. Maybe just a few, a few indications like of this big trapezoid shape. Big angles. Maybe this angle. And that's it. That's good enough for me to set myself up for the next step of the process, which would be eventually shading. One other thing that I would do in this stage, though, in a drawing that has this clear of a shadow shape across is to put that those big shapes because that's not really detail. It's shading if you start actually filling in those shadows. But this is a shape just like the eyebrow is a shape, just like the lip is a shape. This right here is a shape. You don't have to shade it in, but let's start thinking about that cheekbone. I'm not going to put it in as like a, a crisp thin line. I am going to keep it soft. The line weight in here is going to be very light. It's kind of hard because this is such a, a blurry shape. It's kind of hard to figure out where it goes. But like right in here is, is where I'm seeing like the average. And that's right about right under the corner of the eye. And it's almost straight up and down. I'm just gonna make a little blurry, blurry shape like that. Or a blurry line, I mean. And then it connects to the chin. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here that I would probably just save for shading. I just realized I didn't get any of the ear in there. <laughs> so let's get that in because it is a little weird. I don't have to put too much detail, but I I should put some kind of indication of at least uh, a simple representation of that shape. One is let's just make sure it's in the right spot. Straight out from here is the top. My guess of where that begins, that little corner the connection was correct because then it goes up and over and then basically this corner is kind of like the ear it just merges it touches the edge of the head and then the bottom is just above the lip right there and then what can I put in here to represent the ear Typically, when you have such strong lighting, you could just squint a little bit and what that does is it gets rid of all the little details and all you see are the big contrasty shapes. So when I squint, I'm seeing this dark shadow in here. And if I wanted to simplify that shape, I would do something like this. And then there's a little bit of a shape in here. And that's probably good enough. Not very representative of what the anatomy is actually doing, but that's okay. I'm not thinking of it as an ear. I'm thinking of it as a series of shapes. And I'm just looking at what shapes are present in this specific photo.
Let me last pass through here. I'm actually seeing a few little indications of some shapes, big shapes right here. Doesn't matter if I know what that is or not. I'm seeing a shape. So let's put it in. Just last glance here, making sure I'm not missing anything really important. I tend to do that during demos. Look at it from a distance. I don't know why this jumped out at me. This feels like it should be lower. Looks like everything seems to be pretty close. I don't, I don't see anything jumping out at me. Maybe this eye is just a little bit too large. This shape should be kind of coming in a little bit. That makes it feel taller and more open. I'm gonna call this one done. So that was a completely different approach. Much less measuring, but I feel like this one ended up being much more accurate. You never know. Sometimes you could really be too perfectionist and not trust yourself and end up in a worse place. I'm not too surprised that with me personally, this ended up being more accurate because I've been drawing with this mental process for the past like 15 years. I haven't been measuring as much, just those key, few key areas. And so this just kind of fit in more with what I'm used to. Both of these approaches are very valid. And as you develop, try to balance it out. See where you fit at that moment and what's best for you to really develop your eye. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And we're going to be moving on to dynamic shapes and gesture. See you next time.